Today we're going to go through how you should read an oscilloscope data sheet. Wait, you read data sheets? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> well, good, because I'm writing a bunch of them right now, and it makes me feel a lot better that they actually get read. Yeah, you're a resident data sheet expert now on oscilloscope data sheets. <laughs> for better or for worse, yeah. Maybe not on the scopes themselves, but okay. I'm writing a ton of uh, data sheets for our, our Infinium application software. Cool. Um, so before we start, we should probably introduce ourselves. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff. This is Mike Hoffman. And um, it's Friday afternoon, and what better way to spend our Friday afternoon than to sit down Drinking and, beer. Uh, mm, I have water. Did you bring beer? Um, anyway, we're going to walk through how to read an oscilloscope data sheet. It's something that uh, both of us have kind of picked up over the years, but there's some nuances and some things to look out for um, when you're doing that instead of just going off of the website or whatever. So why don't we get started? We're on page one here. Um, we can pop over to our laptop screen so you can see what we are seeing. We picked a random scope, the 3000T. It's kind of a good middle of the range scope to do this for because it goes up to a gigahertz of bandwidth and um, has you know 50 ohm mode and stuff. So it's a good. It should cover a lot of our bases both on the economy side. So if you're working on like the 1000x, 1000 space, or even if you're going up into Windows versions of, of scopes. So yep, Swiss Army knife. Let's get started. Sure, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So page one, just the highlights. Obviously, usually it's a you know, a picture or whatever. Um, let's go to the next page. Table of contents, of course. We can Ooh. scroll through this. We have 40 pages. We're going to try and do this pretty quick. Well, let me talk. I want to okay. talk a little okay. bit about Please the organization do. of the data sheet. If we go yeah, to the table yeah. of contents. Go for it. So initially, we thought this was going to be maybe a 10-minute video, but we geeked out on oscilloscope data sheets for 38 minutes. So we've split this up into a couple different videos. So this is something I struggled with quite a bit when I first... Uh, joined the company and saw how our data sheets were organized, and I went, "Wow, hmm. these are long. This <laughs> yeah. could, this is easily three or four documents in theory combined." So yeah. a lot of people, when they think data sheets, like think of a data sheet for an IC. Right. It's just the performance characteristics and tables. So I always thought, "How come ours aren't like that?" Uh, we have a product brochure that really talks about the different applications the oscilloscope supports. We have a configuration guide, and we have spec sheets all in one document. And the more that time went on, and the more I talked to a lot of my friends who are consumers of these documents, they go, oh, yeah, I love it, because I have one document that has everything I need to know about the oscilloscope from just basic usability, even looking up something after I've bought the scope, or just consuming. Most people consume these data sheets digitally now. They can just hit yep. Control F, search for keywords, does this oscilloscope do this job? Most people shopping for scopes know what a scope does, and <clears throat> ideally, you know, the specs are there, but does the oscilloscope meet my application needs? And having what we have in here, the touch, discover, and solve messaging of the 3000T, going through some of the features, capabilities, applications, extra features, really allows people to understand, you know, what is this thing? Uh, yeah. Does it solve my problem? Now, does it do the job of an oscilloscope? And it lets so. you see what like we as the vendors really want to highlight about the scope. Mm -hmm. um, but it also, you know, it's a place where you can't hide stuff because it's the data sheet. It has all the specs and everything. So yep. you get both the highlights of what different, you know, vendors are pitching about their scopes, but then you get the hard facts of like what is actually going on. Right. People call it marketing fluff. Sure, you can see it that way. Really, it's us trying to provide you easy to digest information. What right. does this thing do without right. having to dig through a user guide or a white paper or, or something in, like interpret that? Interpret two pages of a grid of specs into something that's actually exactly cohesive and exactly for more than just us. So let's keep scrolling down. I don't want to cover this scope specifically. I more want to look into how. Oh, how gotta have the bifold the photo. I love the bifold photo. Every manufacturer does it. I always think I thought it was kind of cheesy. Uh, all of our competitors have this picture. It looks really good when it's printed. There's two sides. Yeah. Yeah. This is legacy. <laughs> this is like from from back in the days when we actually had physical brochures yeah, for yeah. these. I would say data sheets are used in one of two we ways. One is boop. customer pre-sales. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one is customer pre-sales. Them looking up, trying to find their info. One is our field engineers and applicants engineers out talking face to face with customers they'll have these printed out in stacks in the back of their car yeah. hello uh, read this at your leisure uh, wherever that may be or you see like the Newark catalog you know yeah that type of thing, but we did ours fancier yeah. <laughs> we had a lot, lot less to fit in there exactly so open your left eye and then I'll change the page and you can open your right <laughs> eye and then in your brain stitch together the there we go anyway okay here's where it starts to get interesting um, beyond this is more what you'd think of for a normal data sheet uh, the configuration page, 
So it talks, it's going to talk through different models um, and the differences, the key differences between the different models. So in the case of a scope, you know, for this one, we, we say, okay, the key specs here, are, you know, when you're going to actually pick one out, bandwidth, channel count. Yep. Digital, digital channels? No. Rise yeah, time. channel count. Yeah. And rise, rise time oh, yeah, and bandwidth are, yeah. are calculated by each other. I think it says that in the footnote there, or it does later on. Yeah, I mean, all of our models have the same performance features from model to model, aside from channel count and bandwidth. So this is how do you order the dang thing? Which one right. do I choose? There's a, a number of different models. And all the models. specific product numbers and that type of thing. Um, mm. It's basically a, a configuration guide buried into a data sheet. And yep. everyone has this in them. Yep. It's standard stuff. So, uh, And then you get into... Software options, measurement applications, you know, pro I'm just going to read it, productivity tools, application <laughs> bundles, whatever, you know, all that extra software stuff that might be an add-on. A lot of that's been addressed higher up, but not all of it. Right. For example, scent, is scent decode in here on this data sheet? Oh, sensor DSOX 3T yep. sensor. Like, I don't think we talk about that higher up, but there it is. So if, right. if you're control F <clears throat> looking for scent decode. You find yeah, it. Exactly. Obviously, test equipment, more than many other things that people are looking up data sheets for, tend to be more complicated to configure and use, oscilloscopes especially, with this myriad of software options. So again, one-stop shop, one document. You're not clicking around on our website for configuration guide here, brochure there. Yeah. Boom, you, get, you got one thing. Yeah. Okay. What's next? More configuration stuff? Oh, probes and accessories. That's Ooh. fun stuff. That's a lot of optional we love keeping Rose this page maintained. <laughs> oh, if, you if you find things missing from our data sheets, we apologize and please let us know, but there's a lot going blame. on here. Blame Mike. Uh, yeah, blame me. If it's a different scope, then you can blame someone else. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but call their support and be very angry. That's, yep. That's the best course of action. There, we, Yeah, there we go. Yeah, please, <laughs> yeah. please don't do that. Uh, but we're always adding new probes and features and software and functionality, so we'll, we'll try yeah. to keep this as up-to-date as possible. But uh, you can always call us if you really have questions about compatibility or features or specs. And, and with the scope, you're going to need probes always. Yep. You know, it, it's going to come your car. somewhere in here. It's going to tell us what it comes with. Here we go. So it tells you what probes come standard, but you know, current probes, high voltage probes, differential probes, the works, it's all there. You kind of know what you're going to need. So this is our way of just kind of condensing that into so you don't have to go digging through the web page or get your FE or you know, distribution rep right. scratching their heads. So... <laughs> Uh, and accessories, same thing. Um, it, this is, will sometimes tell you about connectivity and that type of thing, um, but that kind of your mileage may vary based on your right, scope. Right, right. And one thing I'll, I'll say this now just popped into my mind, uh, mostly because I'm looking at something we just changed prices on. You're not going to find prices on data sheets, right. mostly because those can change, can and will change without notice. And they're, they vary uh, region so. to region. Yep. Yeah. So that, and there's promos that happen and everything. So, right. yeah, prices are... Not commonly shown. That's Let's see if point. I say this great. Please contact your local Keysight authorized distribution partner for prices and availability. Or whoever. And this next page is really the one. Tweet Daniel. That, <laughs> yeah, you can tweet <laughs> me. That's fine. Uh, at Keysight underscore Daniel, by the way. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Got to get my plug in there. <laughs> um, this is really the page that makes me want to do this type of video is... Ooh. This is where you get to the, like the specs. So mm. can we like high point walk through a lot of these? Like just yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. line item. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So again, the configuration, same table. Um, it's going to start going into the details of scope channels. So it's an oscilloscope data sheet. We're talking about how to read an oscilloscope data sheet. Um, so for this scope, there's a. a I'm just going to let's start line ideming down. So there's a few extra things here. I'll point out yeah, to you at the yeah, top. Please. Sample rate, memory depth display size, and waveform update rate. So these are pretty high-level banner specs that apply to all the models. And then, yeah, we do try to organize this as best as we can. Now, the way that we end up getting all of these specs in here in one way or another, there's things called warranted specifications and things called typical specifications. Right. Warranted specs are things like bandwidth. If you get your scope and you find it doesn't have the bandwidth that it should, that's obviously a huge issue, and we'll fix that for you. Right. Oh, so warranted spec is something that we absolutely guarantee, yep. or any vendor will absolutely guarantee that product will do no matter what. And yep. if it doesn't do that, you get It's either out of back. calibration or, yeah, we fix it for you. Yeah. Then we have typical specs, which are things like, um, what's an example of a typical Isolation spec here? Basically, anything typical, that's right? not limited is uh, listed as warranted. So yeah. Uh, so if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, usually it's going to say what's warranted and what's not. 
Yep. So anything with a footnote one is a warranted spec. Right. So like the user defined threshold range of the digital channels is plus or minus eight volts and ten mil steps. It's not really a spec, I guess. But let me see. Threshold well, accuracy, threshold accuracy is, is, is warranted. warranted. We promise. Um, input impedance, hundred kilo ohms plus or minus two percent, not warranted. If it ends up being plus or minus three percent, yep. Sorry, right? That's, yeah, and then but there's there's a you know a realm of reason in there also, right. but. Um, the the warranted specs are also what we absolutely always test for off the production line and mm -hmm. that type of thing, and that's what our designers are more or less held to, and that's their design parameters. Exactly. Um, so we'll put always put or we want to put a warranted specs in there, and then the typical specs either they're either just reasonable specs that we think people would know, or oftentimes we're in a situation where uh, a customer comes to us and says, "Hey, we want to buy fifteen of your scopes, but we need proof that the this spec is X, Y, or Z, and we need it specified in the data sheet." I'll pop in there and just add mm -hmm. it to the data sheet. So right. <laughs> there are yeah. some bizarre specs. You're like, "Who the heck cares about this?" <laughs> right. Well, someone did. And, yeah, uh, and it was we, probably the government. <laughs> yeah, it was probably the government. And there was some money on the line. Or one so, of two companies we can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Uh, not that you're going through this line by line like we are. More or less. So hardware bandwidth limits. You know, on this scope, there's a 20 megahertz hardware. You can turn it on or off. Yep. Infinium, higher end, like Windows scopes or ones with mm. stronger DSP on the front end are going to have, like, they'll say user definable. Um, if it doesn't have it, it won't be in there. I don't know of any scopes that don't have this built in at this point. I'm yeah. sure there are some. Maybe, you know. USB yeah, scopes, not some bargain thing. bin, something or other. Yeah, but. input coupling, AC, DC. This is also, you know, even the cheapest of cheap lunchbox scopes will have that. Um, input impedance. So this one has one mega ohm input impedance, you know, plus or minus one percent with a fourteen puff, you know, load. Or you get the fifty ohm mode, which is more common among higher end oscilloscopes. So right. your, you know, bargain bin scopes are just going to have one mega ohm. Higher end ones, almost, especially as you get up into the like double digit gigahertz bandwidth, you're almost, yep. You know, you don't even <laughs> use high impedance mode. You just right. use that 50 ohm mode. Um, and yeah. So, uh, what else? Input sensitivity range. So, how far in can you zoom in or out? Right. And this is going to be in one to one mode, ten to one mode. It, it'll tell you. So, the input sensitivity range, yeah, this is this is in one to one. So, if you're in ten to, if you're using a ten to one probe, multiply by ten. So, one millivolt per division to five volts per division. If you're using a ten to one probe, it's now ten to ten to fifty. Right. So, you have to factor in that probe multiplier. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, vertical resolution. This is the ADC. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was not the right one. There we go. The ADC. So. Um, you know, 8 bits, 10 bits, 12 bits, really what matters is the, we call it the effective number of bits or ENOM. Right. We've right. covered that. I don't want to go into it. Um, but, it'll, you know, a lot of people specify, oh, I need an ADC with this number of bits. Right. Specify ENOM. Don't worry too much about the actual vertical, re like this ADC resolution. Worry about the effective number of bits. Right. And yeah. If you, have a, if you have a 4K camera, but you're filming in the middle of the night and your resolution, you know, you're, what you're filming is all grainy. It doesn't really matter. Yep. What the, so it's all about system resolution. Input um, voltage. Yep. Yeah. So this one, you know, 135 RMS, 190 peak. Usually there's going to be both an RMS and a peak value. Um, the smoke point of the oscilloscope. Yeah. The, I'm always <laughs> nervous getting close to that. And then, you know, it goes on to say with the right probes, you can do whatever, you know. But Measurement accuracy, isolation, uh, yeah. offset range, so offset support. Accuracy is a really interesting topic to think about in a data sheet. Um, this is kind of, a, I'm just going to you know, throw caution to the wind and say this. Like I promised earlier, this is going to be a three-part video series. Next up, we're going to look at DC vertical gain accuracy, which I think is a fascinating topic and something that we kind of hide in data sheets as oscilloscope manufacturers, and you know everybody does this. So to make sure you see part two when it comes live, make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Labs YouTube channel. There's also going to be a playlist over here somewhere with all three parts of those videos once they're released. Thanks for watching.